Janice is arguably one of the most broken heroes in the game right now. How she's been in the game unnerved for so long, I really don't understand. But I might have to do something with the fact that not everyone knows how to effectively abuse your hero power and pretty much just cheat. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. I'll discuss her game plan, her ups and downsides, early, mid and late game with Jandis, some good hero power targets and an example game at the end. The game plan is simple, find a couple tokens, get a couple triples, Murder the lobby. But what if I don't find a token? Well, you can always go bottom right, but even finding a token a bit later can lead to good results. Or just picking up other good units to balance if you're here power, like buffs. So, the upsides of playing Jandas, well, the obvious one is that if you have a token on turn 1, you win because you get two five drops on turn six and i will of course show you how to do that later on other than that she's really flexible and there's lots of other good targets that probably give you way too much value for a zero gold here power the downsides now if you don't find an early token it is very easy to panic tunnel vision and die early. She also needs some specific tribes in her lobbies, like murlocs and beasts because those are the main tokens. And of course there's always the risk of missing on your triples or missing on all the good units that you can find to bounce with your hero power. Now let's dive into her early game. I'll mainly talk about the token openers from Janice because those are the most important to know and also the only real special openers that Janice has. So the token on turn 1, here you just buy it and hero power the main body. Please don't hero power the token. And I've seen it before and freeze in the end but if you have a really bad shop you can also just buy the token and wait a turn to hero power because turn two we usually just level and freeze the shop again but if you haven't hero powered yet now you can hero power and freeze the shop to try and get a better unit to replace it turn three on five gold we just buy the token and hero power it again we sell our weakest unit on the board that is not a token and rebuy the token. You could play it here, generate a triple and play that triple discovering a tree drop, but please, if there's one thing you take away from this video, then is that you really don't need to take this triple this early on, because this tree drop can be a five drop instead. In which case you just hold the golden token in hand to play it later. What's even better is just not making the triple yet and holding the main token in hand because then you have two one ones on the board instead of your 2-1 Tidehunter or your 1-1 Alley Cat, which is just stronger for the turn. Turn 4, 6 gold, we just play it and here power the token, buy it again, we buy one more unit from the shop and of course play the token. Turn 5 we again hero power the token, buy and level and turn 6 we pop off. We level again to tier 4, hero power the token and sell our weakest unit on the board to buy the token again and generate that second triple. Keep in mind that you have enough burst space for the tokens to summon and create the triple. Now we play both of our golden token triples and discover two 5 drops. What exactly the best units are to find and discover here I'll share with you when I'm talking about the mid game. If you're really Really ballsy or you have a weak opponent on turn 6 you could even choose to hold on to both triples an extra turn level again and take two six drops on turn seven okay but let's say you have some shit luck and you don't find a token on turn one what now there's multiple lines you can take generally speaking if both alley cats and tide hunters are in the lobby i like staying down on tier one and rolling at least once transposing into a jeef curve or maybe even rafam curve depending on what i find i won't explain those curves again in depth but if you don't know what they are i've made some leveling videos in the past so i recommend you check them out they're right right here <laughs> If there's only one token in the lobby, I usually just level on turn 2 and play the game kinda normal unless of course I have a token in my shop on that turn. And if you find a token later, things can get a bit awkward gold wise and board wise but you still want to try and hero power the token every single turn and get 2 5 drops as early as possible. And if you find it too late, you could even consider taking a 4 drop and a 5 drop or a 4 drop and a 6 drop uh, from your second triple, you can be flexible with it. And then we are in the mid game. It is time to start dealing 15 damage to everyone that crosses your path, but how? So the best 5 drops to hit right now is Janda specifically or Bren because it's amazing value with your hero power, Begurgle if you want to commit to Murloc since you can bounce it every turn, Battle Master also just a great hero power target if you've been taking some hits early on, Nomi is alright since Janda can return elementals to the shop which also get an extra buff, and then of course you have the obvious good 5 drops like Light Fang, Mama Bear, sometimes Agam, Urzul, Hogar, Mackerel, the list goes on, tier 5 is just pretty good right now. And what if you 
don't get a token or you miss on your triples. Well, here are some good targets for you to look for to bounce back and forth in the shop. Most buffs are alright, but Jug definitely tops them all. Situationally, there's card generation that could lead to triples, money, buffs or direction like Tavern Tempest, Murazond and Hamul. And if you make it to tier 6, you could bounce things like an Amalgadon or even a Seafood Slinger for some high rolls. Late game. As always, you will want to tech against your opponents. Most of the time as Genesis, you'll have outskilled the entire lobby with your early triples and hero power to abuse for stats. This can lead to people trying to cheese with poison and shields, so just like most end games, you'll want to find tech cards to counter your opponents. But mainly fill the flex spots on your board with cards to negate the tech cards from your opponents that they will have to find in order to beat you. So basically just get a selfless hero, a zap, a ghoul, the usual things. Do not get scammed. Now some closing thoughts before we head into the example game. Jen is actually pretty easy to play and has a very straightforward and streamlined game plan and strategy. It just takes a little bit of practice. But once you know how she operates and how to properly level with her, buy stuff and get multiple triples, she is goddamn strong. This guide actually turned out a lot shorter than most of my hero guides and that's because Janice only actually has like one main interesting strategy with her hero power which is the token bouncing to generate triples early on. Other than that, She's pretty basic. I'm always amazed when I see people say they don't have high win rates with Jandis and think she's not a great hero because every time I see her being played in top level, she does great and you just know that if they have a token on turn 1, the entire lobby is dead. So I hope this guide clears some things up for you and that you get to consistently dominate lobbies as well with this opener. And in case there's still some things unclear to you, here is a game where I play Jandis and I try to clearly showcase the potential that her hero power has and how you can efficiently abuse it. Real quick, 70% of people that watch my content are actually not subscribed. So if this video was helpful in any way or just fun to watch, please consider clicking that button to catch more videos like this in the future and leave a like so YouTube knows that this video is worth it. Okay, time for gameplay. Tidehunter. <gasps> This is my lucky day. Wait, it's two tide hunters. Does that change anything? We always buy one. I think I'll just hear a power. And I'll freeze anyway. Kinda achieved nothing, but if you hit to where fever it did. So we just level here. And just your power and freeze again. Dude, I hit Tide Hunter again? That's unlucky. Best case, we had one of these. Because um, then we have both of them in the shop. I can buy both next turn. But it's fine. It's fine. So we just buy this one. Usually, this is the frozen one in shop, right? And this would just be a random unit. We could sell this or this, but if we sell this... Nah, I'm pretty sure we still sell this. Buy this, but hold on the hand, because if we play it, we just have a 2-1 on the board. That's it, but now we have 2-1-1s one on the board. So I assume this is the play. I didn't even realize, but the entire lobby is AFK. Okay, so small explanation for the guys watching on, on YouTube. Uh, I disconnected or I re like over an hour to try and get Jandis for an example game. So my MMR is trash and everyone is, is not here. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is that you see how I play Jandis, how to abuse these tokens, right? That's why you're here. So this video will still demonstrate how to do exactly that. Just don't pay attention to the AFKs in the lobby. We hold this triple in hand, trying to get a, a 5 drop at least. Is there anyone playing the game? Yes, we have Ysera playing the game. <laughs> One guy! <laughs> so we just level here. Hero power. Don't get the ghoul, because that would hurt. Okay, that's fine. And next turn we pop off. We get um, two 5 drops and we have more pairs on the board. I think so, Effie, yeah. So we just level, hero power. So, sell, we need to sell two so we have board space to generate enough tokens for the triple. And now you take two five drops. 
So Light Fang has good scaling. I don't think we need Battle Master, we're too healthy, even though it's okay with Genders. I'll take a Light Fang. I guess... I guess Hogger. It's a good pirate, but we have pirates already with Light Fang. We could transition into Hoggers. I'm gonna keep the pairs. Discover first before you get the triple, so that way you can find Bran, and then you could find a second triple of the Tide Hunter, right? Because you bounce here again. You need board space for that, but yeah, indeed. And we can just level here, try and get Menagerie or Hogger Comp, something like that. Have some fun. Yeah, we can. We go to five because then we can find Bran. We could triple into sixes, which is a Mogadon. So we can find a pair on Hogger. If I stay down, I just make my Menagerie board, but I don't have to. I'm healthy enough. And in this case, the lobby is AFK, but even if the lobby wasn't AFK, you know. <laughs> so this was probably the most important part of the gameplay, the early game, and how you set up a comp and then do stuff. So from here on, it's pretty much just playing Solitaire. I'm not going to show all of it, because all I do is like buy stats and get stronger. I'll show you some fun little clips, and then the end was still pretty amazing. So make sure you stick around and see the final board with the most Amalgadons you've ever seen in your entire life. I think I will take this. Maybe get out of these. And we can do APM Dragons. That's actually a lot of fun. Pirate APM Dragons. So I'm gonna go out of you. I'm gonna play you already. Okay. There's an Adina as well. Okay, we got our game plan. As up, Hogish? Okay, this is a pretty clean turn. This was uh, pretty clean, if I can say so myself. We pivoted from Menagerie into APM Caligos Menagerie with Pirates. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Oh, I wasted money. No one saw that. I'm a I'm a professional Bagos player, by the way. Shit. Oh, wrong order. No one no one saw that again. Actually, impossible. Sorry, I have to do it like this. No time, literally, uh, the lag is too much. If there was no lag, I could get it in perfectly. But this is a fun, this was a fun game, fun board. I should probably put, like, my Nadina's a bit different. Wow. So they have one Nadina. Golden Amalgadon, normal Amalgadon. Golden Caligos, normal Caligos. And even I have more stats because of the Golden Hogger. I'm still losing. But I can win this with better positioning. They have uh, one Divine Shield Dome, right? And a non Divine Shield Dome. I need to put Bronze Worm first, so Nadina, and then Caligos, and then Nadina, I think. I sold my Peggy. I need double Nadina, I have to sell a Nadina then. Hmm. Spore, probably better than Nadina, actually. If I'm selling something. Actually, it's Caligos that we sell for Spore. Because Caligos kills nothing on this guy's board, right? Literally nothing. I think we have to try and shoot for the high roll, which is like this. Bronze Sword and Adina Spore and try to get two shields back twice. Oh, in one turn, he got how many more Amalgadons? He got three Golden Amalgadons. How does that even happen? He had a Golden Amalgadon, Normal Amalgadon. So he tripled an Amalgadon into Seafood Slinger into rolling another Amalgadon, right? Oh shit. I'm not winning this, this is taking way too long. This is fun though. 
I honestly just need to ghoul. I need to outsmart him. Right? This thing is also kind of shit. Maybe I should gem this up. I should have looked for a gem, maybe. This spore has to go. How do we position this? If he gets my bronze one, he's dead. No, he's not. Six, five, four, it's one off. He tripled Nadina. He got four golden amalgadons. What? This guy has four golden amalgadons. So he has one Nadina now. He put it first. So I guess I can lead with school and I just need to win the 50 50. Right? Oh, this is stupid. This is so stupid. I want to see if I can beat him, though. Why did he concede? I wanted to see the final fight, still. Dual Nadina, poor Nadina, I think. Aha, uh -huh, I think we beat him this time. Ah, we lost the 50-50 though. Oh wait, but that didn't have poison. Yeah, we beat him this time. We would have beaten him. Because of our spore. Instead of uh, bones. Thank you for watching this game. I was a giant this game after over an hour and a half of just conceding we finally got our game.